Hello! Today I'm going to be looking at the Stuart Sample palette of the world's coloriest watercolours. These are made by Culture Hustle in the UK and according to their website they are professional grade watercolours. Now I went into filming this video having done very little research and I haven't watched any other videos on this palette because I wanted to give you my first impressions as unbiased as possible. So are these paints actually professional grade or are they a total gimmick? We're going to find out today in this video, so let's get into it! First things first, let's get the plastic packaging off the box because it's reflecting horribly under my studio lights. That's much better. The box that this palette comes in is very bright and psychedelic. I think it's really appealing and pretty packaging is always something that will pull me in. I'll link Culture Hustle down below. You can see it's a pretty easy website to find. They do international shipping as well, although that wasn't exactly cheap. But on the back of the box is the colour palette with some extremely unconventional names for the colours. This has to be my first time ever owning a paint called Butt Nugget. <laughs> but yes, I was a little concerned with the naming because usually artist grade paints are called by the name of the colour or the pigment. But there's not a quinacridone, azo or burnt anything to see there. But let's keep an open mind as I struggle to open this box and we'll see what the palette actually looks like. I can never get these boxes open on camera, it's like the pressure of it is just too much. But I eventually got into it. And I'll slide out the surprisingly sleek and modern looking plastic palette that's inside. I was expecting the palette to be really bright and colourful, but to know it's a plain white, which I actually really like anyway because it's going to showcase the colours when I open it up. It has a nice easy opening catch on the front, and then inside is a printed swatch card of all of the colours, 36 of them in this palette. That paper is quite pearlescent as you can see, so I will be swatching these out for myself. But next is this mixing palette sheet that is detachable and I really like this. It's got little feet and it stands nicely on the desk. You can probably see in the corners how it goes back into the box. So I think that's a really interesting design. And here we have the main part with the palette of colours, two little sponges and a water brush. The paints themselves are solid cakes and are half pan sized, or at least as close to half pans as I can imagine them to be, much like a lot of other watercolour sets I've seen. Overall, I think the palette kind of looks like it would be student grade, and I was a bit dubious about that pink being light first, but we'll come back to that soon. I think before I get too judgmental, I really need to swatch the paints out because that's going to give us a full indication as to what they're like. I filled up the water brush at the tap and it screws on just like any other brush I've ever used. It's perfectly fine as water brushes go, the water came through quite easily and it's got a nice point. And you'll see me using this brush to swatch the paints out. No issues here, it's a perfectly adequate water brush. So let's get swatching! I ruled out a large sheet in my sketchbook. I was letting that black line dry on Saint, so I'll come back to that one. I sped this up because it actually took me ages to swatch these out, but I have to say that I am really pleasantly surprised with how good these paints are. I mean, the website does state their professional quality, but for some reason I was just feeling quite cynical about it. I guess some companies out there state their paints are professional and they're clearly not when you use them, but these ones behave exactly as I would expect professional watercolours to do. They re-wet nicely, the pigments are strong and brightly saturated for most of them. There are a couple of paler ones which are more pastel versions and I quite like those too. They're lovely and transparent, there's no noticeable filler in them. And they actually remind me quite a lot of a set of professional Sennelier paints that I have which are also dry half pans like this. I think what's throwing me off and probably what will throw a lot of other artists off are the names of the paints and the fact that there is absolutely no pigment information on them. I mean I can guess what some of the colours are, but without that pigment information it is somewhat limiting as to knowing whether these colours are actually light fast, because the Culture Hustle website also says that all of these paints have an excellent light fast rating of 1, which is the highest rating you can get. I guess we're just going to have to take their word for that because there's no proof that they are. But what I think is quite interesting is this next colour pink. I think is the pigment, the pinkest pink that they actually manufactured. 
and it's not an opera pink as I originally thought it was. So maybe it is light fast, but I think the only way of finding this out is if I paint out a swatch and stick it in the window, which I'm probably going to do for these ones because I'm really curious. But if anyone from Culture Hustle happens to watch this video, I think a lot of artists would be most appreciative if you could put up a pigment chart on your website. But all of that nerdy stuff aside, the colours in this palette are very nice. You can see what I mean about there being a few pastel colours like that dropout. Once again the white was a bit of a disappointment, that one is Saint up on the left hand corner. My guess is it is a zinc white and not a titanium white which is why it isn't very opaque. But I always whinge about that, so we could probably let that one slide. Is there anything else I can nitpick in this palette? Not too much, other than some of the colours are quite similar to each other. Maybe Always and Dive are quite close, although they look a little bit more different now I'm seeing them on camera. And I actually think Always is Ultramarine, and Dive may well be Cobalt Blue. 1980 is probably my favourite blue out of all of them. It is quite turquoisey and it's a very pretty one. Zolta is lovely as well. Maybe Prussian Blue for that one. And then there's also an Indigo Blue which I'm quite happy about. Although it's maybe not quite as dark as I would like it to be. It is a lovely blue though. There's maybe a few too many greens in this set. But on the positive side of that, I find that mixing greens can be quite a pain, so I always like it when there are convenience greens in a palette. It just makes life so much easier. And they have some very pretty ones in here, from yellowish greens to the really bright venom green. Emerald City has a slightly lower tinting strength, but then we come into another yellow green, which I think should have been next to Envy, and then we get into the Thalo greens with this loser that is clearly Thalo green blue shade. They also have Thalo Green Yellow Shade with this monster colour, and that's always a nice one to have. And happily, Swamp is actually quite a dark green. As you probably know, I do love to have a dark green in any palette. I use dark green a lot in paintings. Alongside all of the bright colours are some more neutral or brown tints. First up, I'm guessing, is a yellow ochre wheat field. Akhenaten looks like a Venetian red colour to me. That's a really pretty one. But I really wish I could swap it around with Bullion, which is another gold colour like the Wheatfield. Those two should be side by side, don't you think? And then we have good old Butt Nugget, which looks like a burnt umber to me. Possibly a transparent brown, but I will never again think of that colour without thinking of Butt Nugget. There's one more brown, and then two blacks, and I really wish one of them was Payne's Grey. But my best guess is that Dirtbag is Ivory Black and Void is Lamp Black. They're both at least very dark, so that's always useful. And now let's take a look at the whole palette once it has fully dried. And I have to say, I really like the colours. The yellows and reds are really bright. There's some nice pink colours and purples, some blues, a lot of greens, and some earth tones as well. I don't know if they're the coloriest colours in the world, but they are nice and bright and colourful. So now it's time to test them further in a painting, but first I have to draw it. Because this palette has a lot of bright whimsical colours, I thought I would come up with a bright whimsical picture. And so we have the cat convention. I've seen a few similar illustrations out there, but otherwise I made this entire thing up and I wasn't using any references, so I just was guessing as to what the cats would look like. I wanted to squish in as many as possible. And once I'd finished penciling them in, I'm just going over everything with an ink pen that has waterproof black ink in it. Of course, you wouldn't want to do this with a pen that ran because once the watercolours go on, it's going to make one heck of a mess. These cats will end up with faces eventually, but I thought I'd draw in all of the shapes first and then worry about their expressions afterwards. I think there are a couple of other YouTube artists who draw cats like this and I was probably channeling them. And I'm sure there are similar kinds of paintings out there, but all of the little faces I just drew in straight with the pen, so mistakes and all for this one. I wanted some of them to have different expressions and just make it look a bit more fun. Like when you try to wrangle a whole bunch of people together for a group photo and not everyone is looking at the camera. That's what I was thinking of as well when I was drawing this. One of the cats has glasses for some unknown reason. I think I might have made one of the eyes all wobbly and so I just kind of hid it by drawing on those glasses. They're wobbly too, but I do like how this came out. It was so much fun drawing these. 
And I like working from imagination sometimes, just not having the pressure of trying to make something look like a reference image. I also thought it would give me a lot more freedom with the paints themselves because they are just so bright and colourful. I wanted to be able to add in all of the colours to my painting. So I'm just finishing up the inking here and we'll get in with the actual painting. I had no real plan as to which cat was going to be which colour. I just started painting one and then going in randomly with other colours eventually filling in all of the cats. I was also trying to paint separate ones so that the paint didn't run into each other and I could let some cats dry before painting right next to them. Some cats I painted in the single colours and others I added a couple of colours to them. Really I didn't do any mixing other than what was on the paper though. I just wasn't in the mood for it. I mean I know I should have been testing out the mixing and all of this other stuff but sometimes I just need to go where the creativity leads me and then I will always get a better picture than if I force it. This cat is called Butt Nugget by the way for obvious reasons. <laughs> I should also note that any issues with uneven drying is due to the paper and not the paints themselves. The paper in this Hannah Mueller sketchbook is unfortunately not as good as I would like it to be. But I persevered anyway and I am so happy with the results of this painting. The paints themselves are really lovely to use and I can't fault them really, aside from the names maybe, but that's about it. The actual quality of the paints themselves is excellent. And that always makes me so happy when an art supply outperforms and exceeds my expectations. Aside from the paint palette, I also used some silver to paint their noses and some white ink for highlights and whiskers. I think this turned out so cute and I really love the colours. Annoying paper aside, I'm really happy with the quality of the paints. They are definitely professional, or at least I think they are. And if you're looking for a fun palette of colours with lots of variety, then this one is definitely one to consider. Although until I can find more about the light fastness of the colours, I would probably keep this paint set for using in sketchbooks. But otherwise I like it because it's quite unique and quirky, the names are a bit of fun and the palette's also quite light and streamlined enough that you could use it for traveling as well. And the paintbrush fits in with the lid on which is something that is always really great. Derwent take note. <laughs> but one thing I forgot to test was actually mixing on the palette because it's plastic water and paint will usually have a tendency to bead up on it. And that did indeed happen when I put the water directly on there, but when I added in some paint just straight onto the palette, you can see it's laying on there nicely. It does bead up if you add too much water though. But as a mixing surface, this insert is actually pretty good. And as I do more paintings with the palette, I'm sure I will use it a lot. I don't know why I decided to mix in purple and green there. That is a pretty hideous colour. But now I know you can mix neutrals from bright colours here. <laughs> so yes, all of the bits and pieces in this palette work really well together. And the sponges are there to wipe off colour from the water brush if you haven't got a water pot to wash it in like I did today. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and I'd really appreciate a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You might want to click the subscribe button and I'll have a couple of other videos up here for you to look at as well. Would I recommend the world's coloriest watercolor set? Yes, I would. I think it's really great and I look forward to using it more in the future. Have a great day and I'll see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye.